you know what I'm going to do while I'm driving on hands free of course have a do some actual electrical content oh yeah I can't zoom in because I'm driving I use the buttons to stop the video but uh, let's do some actual electrical content on the 2391 I've just done a training course for it today uh, obviously the lads that run it uh, all sound as f they won't get the benefit of this video but uh, I'll put it out there for everyone else but I like to have a fair crack at the but yeah let's talk about that I've not put a video about 2391 on my own channel before and a lot of the stuff I'm going to reference in this video already exists. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel, I don't see the point of it yet. A lot of the materials you need are already out there. I'm just going to tick them all up and let you know about them because that's one of the main things before you got the course in it is to know what, what you need to know. So that's what I'm going to tell you in this video. I'm going to tell you all my top tips to do before you go on a 2391. I'm not going to teach the course in this little Instagram video tell you what you need to do before you go make no mistake about it yeah 2391 is can be difficult is difficult whichever one you want to say what i'll tell you is decent sparkies but have got 15 years plus experience and have tested hundreds of their own jobs and pieces of work will go on a 2391 and will fail it and when they go back to work they are no less of a sparky it's just most of the time they've been put out of their comfort zone and i'll tell you why on the absolute flip side of that there are third year apprentices fourth year apprentices that could quite easily go on a five day two three nine one course and pass it easily i know because that's what i did because at that time i was at college it was fresh in my head I knew about exam pressures, which is one of the main reasons for people failing is the pressure doing the exam. And the testing I knew inside out, and I went on and did it. But did it make me a great tester? Probably not, because I didn't have much experience. However, I did pass the 2391, the hard one with the written exam people, not the fucking easy one to do now. But I did pass and test it. I did pass it, but I don't think I was a particularly good inspector of existing works, ERCRs, periodics and stuff, because I was too young. I'm going to cover two main points in this little video, yeah? I'm going to cover a little bit about the exam, and I'm going to cover a bit about the practical assessment. And obviously, in between that, I'll dip into the five-day course you have to do to achieve those. However, I'm not going to dip into it too much because two years ago, when I was teaching 2391 all the time, I did a video series, four parts, about 25 minutes a pop, with Apprentice One to One. It's me, Mark Allison, and Craig Buist, and it's on YouTube. If this is if this is on YouTube, the link will be here. If not, go to my YouTube my YouTube profile, go to the playlist, scroll down, you'll call, you'll find one called 2391 Playlist. Every video I'm gonna recommend and talk about will be in there. If it's not, it will be by the end of the day, but I think it's already in there because I'm just the course because already in So basically, if you want to cut it short now, f off because I've got a YouTube view, yeah. Go straight to the playlist and watch those videos. It will all start to make sense from those videos. Watch the Apprentice one to one four part first, and then watch the videos that are in my playlist. Yeah, the other ones. I'm just, I'm not, I don't feel, I don't feel the need to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, I don't come on YouTube and do stuff that people have already done to a high standard. So just to reiterate, yeah, the John Ward testing video series that details each test from the start to the finish, along with all the associated shit, those videos can't be beat. They are the benchmark for me. Sorry if you've got a video on it, yeah, but I'm gonna recommend no one else's apart from John Ward's. I think he keeps them nice and basic, he keeps them nice and dry, he doesn't throw any comedy in, he just goes for exactly what's going off. And I massively respect that on a video that I'm showing to people because all you need to do, number one, is know your tests inside out at no point should you stand away from the test and go what we're doing next doing the test should come naturally to you and if you watch those john ward videos because they are so structured in the proper order by watching them and replicating them edit remember explain demonstrate imitate and practice he'll do the explanation the demonstration you do the imitation the practice yeah and by watching those Obviously, there's a resource somewhere else. I'd show you if I was teaching at college. I don't show people those videos. I do it myself. But by watching those, you will understand the process involved in each test and its order. They cannot be beat. I say that in the 2391 video. Three years later, I'm still saying the same thing. They're the best testing videos on the internet, bar none.
sorry everyone else. Again, another John Ward video on there. John Ward covers all the paperwork. Now the paperwork he covers is the 17th edition paperwork. So it's in slightly different order and slightly different forms. It doesn't matter because the basic information is all the same on the forms. There's a new few new bits and bobs, but there's a download online. Just Google BS7671 forms IT and you'll be able to download the latest copy of the forms. Or look at the ones in the back of your regs book and you'll be able to relate those John Ward videos to the forms. Top tip number two, yeah? That John Ward video, apart from if you come to see the classroom with me, can't be beat for going through with test forms. It is outstanding. The forms have not sufficiently changed enough for anyone to require doing a new one. If you know your forms, yeah, if you know your forms and what needs to go on and where, that is top tip number two. So you need to know your tests, you need to know your forms, all of them. Doesn't take a lot of effort to do that, and that is the secret to passing. Some of the other, other videos are next to for memory, yeah. There's a couple of David Savory ones. One's about a really bad EICR, one's about something else, David Savory ish. One of them's about the death of Harvey Terrell, the little guy that, uh, the little lad that died in a pub beer garden. I make every student of 2391 with me watch that on the first morning so they can see what bad test and inspection happens, yeah. And then when I'm talking about legislation and all that all the way through, or referencing and talking about using books and making sure you're signing on the dotted line and you know what you're doing. I always then use that as a reference to say, look, this is what happens when we don't do it properly. But if you come out to me with me, you watch anyway, but I suggest you watch it because you'd be surprised what goes wrong in a test. One last thing I recommend is, it's quite a recent edition, the past few years, is there is an IT book called Exam Revision for the 2391. Again, if it's on YouTube, I'll put a thing of it here. I believe they've recently changed this book from the one I've got, which is this one. And I'm going to buy this one, which I believe is the new one. Sorry if you're not watching YouTube, but that's just the way it is with graphics, yeah? That book, you'll get given three example papers on your course, but you get given them on the course, you can't get them beforehand. Don't use online questions, they're all shite, written by idiots. Get that book, read it a few times, and just get yourself familiarised with reading the question and looking at the question and taking out the parts of the question, dissecting the bits you need. Then, when you feel a bit confident and read the questions, sit and do it as a two hour exam. The three other books you'll need on the course are Guidance Note 3, the Regulations BS7671 and the On-Site Guide. You'll need a pack of the plastic tabs in the picture there and a permanent marker pen. Yeah, you'll need a pack of those plastic marker tabs, not the f***ing post notes, the proper ones that are made out of plastic. Sorry, microplastic, sorry little baby seals. And a permanent marker pen to make notes and tabs. And you should also spend the month before you go on the course reading all the books and familiarising yourself with the chapters. You've probably already got an 18th edition, so you can leave off on the BS7671, just refresh yourself on it. But pay particular attention to Guidance Note 3. Guidance Note 3 is your Bible. On a lot of the places I teach courses that they give out like a notebook, a workbook, I don't use it. I don't teach people to use some random company's workbook because that's what Guidance Note 3 is for. I've just been away training for a company this week. They gave me these workbooks. I said I'd have a look for them, have a flick for them, I'll flick for it myself. It weren't Guidance Note 3, that's the Bible, that's all you need. I don't believe in workbooks on 2391, maybe that's a personal preference. Just use Guidance Note 3, that's what you need, and that is what you need to get familiarised with. <laughs> Exams wise, you're going to do two. One of them will be your practical, and one of them will be your written exam, where you're doing it in exam conditions, usually on a computer, yeah? Or always on a computer thing nowadays. What happens in these exams is, there's two ways to make people panic. Well, there's three, but you can't beat them up. The, be the two ways that are legal to make people panic is to provide a financial problem that will affect them, or provide a time constraint which will affect them. And both of these exams, unfortunately, do both of those things. Yeah, so both exams offer the option to feel stressed that if you don't pass it, you're gonna have to pay to do it again. If you're going to fail one, yeah, fail the paper one because it's cheaper than doing the practical exam, I think. Some courses you come back to the practical exam, some courses you do as part of the exam, but the practical one, if you're generally on the course in the right level of your career, and test have recently said only electricians can do it, you shouldn't have a problem with the practical exam unless you panic. So just bear that in mind, all the tips for that exam 
or in a full video on the Apprentice 1 to 1 that I've linked, yeah? Regarding the normal paper exam, the biggest problem in this exam is reading. People not reading stuff properly or people not being used to reading exam questions. Many people haven't done exams in school and they get stressed out about it and fucking flustered and all flop apart, yeah? All I can suggest is you get the book and you do that pre-exam and get you used to it. It's impossible to replicate the exam condition at home. At a place to used to work, I used to work at, we'd offer people the chance to do the exam early if they wanted to do it early. I would offer the people the chance to not sit the exam on the course and come back at a later date and do it. I would personally just sit it at the point on the course it's, it's, it's scheduled to go. The, the, the mindset is, I tell my students, I could give a f about your exam, yeah? I don't care how you get on your exam because I've got mine and you shouldn't care too. You should just go in there and hit it for what it is. If you start getting wound up about it, you'll make yourself worse. And if you don't give a fuck about it, then you'll make yourself worse. Just go and do the first exam like it's a train exam, like you're getting back into the swing of doing exams and whatnot, yeah? And if you don't pass it, go away, sharpen your pencil on what you need to do, come back and have another go. It's the only advice I can give. I know it might cost you another 100 quid, but just factor it in. It's not worth getting aggravated over 100 quid. Take it as training or take it as a free blend if you pass. Practical wise, I won't get aggravated about it, yeah? But I'd make sure you've done all your preliminary things like get your admin in order, get your books in order, know where your paperwork is, know what your tests are, get in the room, have a look around. When you've done all your admin and you're happy with what you're gonna do, you start the test, you do your isolation, you prove your isolation, you check all your bonding, and you move on to doing the testing. That's exact, I'm not saying that for the exam, that's what you do in real life. Get there, look around, do all your admin, get your table set up, get your test track, get all your books out and all that shit. Then you'd ask permission off the person who's in the house, say, you're happy for me to turn it off now, I'm going to start. Then you turn the power off, lock it off, prove your test, prove it was dead, prove your tester, and then you crack on with the actual testing by doing the bonding first, because you can't do f***ing call unless that's there, and then moving on to the test. And that's the only advice I'm going to give. And I always get people asking me, how can I get for a 2391, yeah? The secret to getting for a 2391 is doing all the preparation you can do. And this little video says it, sets it all out, tells you where the resources are and the place on my YouTube. I will put information on the books up in this video and where they are from hours at the time of filming. And the best thing you can do to get ready for it is to read that mock exam book, the official mock exam book, not questions online, is to know your tests and know your way around the paperwork and have good admin of your books and equipment. That is all the things that we call being inside the learner's control. You go on the course, hopefully get a good tutor who can explain it well. Those are things outside your control. And when you go into the exam, you try and stay cool, try and stay calm, you try and keep a good pace, and you're just practicing or doing something that you've already done before, albeit with the little constraints of doing the job. So yeah, over the hopes you. And I've literally recorded this in my red hot van. It's like 24 degrees outside. I've been cracking up the air conditioning between uh, filming the slots of it because I've just done a 2391. I'm just driving up the A34 Nubra, but I'm stuck in virtually State Street traffic. We're like crawling along doing the call. So uh gives me something to fucking do and I've just got it all out while it's fresh in my head, which is what you do on the exam. You go into the exam, you try and bang it all out while it's fresh in your head. But that is pretty much what I've picked up from this week's course. It was good to get back into it for me. Not done one of those courses for two years. I think I did the lads around the course. There was all lads, I was going to say ladies as well. They was all pretty switched on. They was all switched on, to be fair. I think I was switched on. I went back home to the hotel every night and I made sure what I'd do my day. I reviewed everything I'd done. I made sure I delivered everything. I made it sure that all the key teaching points. I was trained as well. I was trained to get back into it. I got lucky because there's only four people. But yeah, hopefully that'll help us in the future. Empty me, I don't like that. Here's a little one. Yeah, so I was messing with going, you don't need plastic tabs. You just need to know your books. Yeah, right, you need to know your way around the books, yeah? But no matter how well you know a book, you can't open it at the contents page to section four or section six instantly every time. It'll probably take you about 10, five to 10 seconds to find roughly where it is, open it up, flick forward or flick backward a few pages. Why bother? Just tab up your book with the fucking chapter pages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And throughout the test, you'll probably save yourself a good three or four minutes by doing that so yeah i don't accept that as a thing know your books as well but tab them up too mate not over tab though i've got a video about that on my youtube i'll put a link to it here
couple of bits. If this is on YouTube, this might be the start of the video, yeah? Um, when I teach now, because I have a little bit of like, online presence in the Sparky world, because I do the podcast, I do the YouTube thing, I do this, I tell students immediately that I do this. I didn't use to because I thought it was a bit big-headed. Obviously, I'm a big player, but no one likes being rubbed in the face over dealing with one. But what I say to them is, I say, I'll do this podcast, I'm on Instagram, and I am on YouTube. And if you've been on one of my courses and you don't think I've delivered, or you don't think I'm good enough, or you think I've let you down, anyone, absolute fucking cash back promise, yeah? Go on to any of the media I'm on, go on the podcast, go on me on YouTube, go on this Instagram. If you tag me in them, or tag me on here, and say, I did a course with him, and he was fucking for these reasons, I'll, I'll retweet it. I'll send it back out, I'll copy and paste and say, someone has said this about me. That is the only way I can deliver my promise. It's like, if you go on any of my media and say he's a knob, I talk with him and he's f***ing cut into this properly, my word is my bond. If it's on whatever medium it's on, I will screenshot it and I will add it to my website. I won't put the good ones up. I'm not interested in the good ones. I'm only interested in the bad ones. So anyone that's been told by me ever, put your little ditty about what course we did, where it was and when, and why I was bad, and I'll f***ing tell everyone. Yeah, because that keeps me on my toes. Open invitation. And if anyone catches me not doing it, well, you won't. Simple as that. But if you do, come around my house and keep my teeth in. And someone's put, oh, you've got your enthusiasm for teaching back. I never lost my enthusiasm for teaching, really. It's just that I've always liked to do it around my normal work because I like to be the sparky that does sparky and that teaches as well. But I don't want to be just a teacher. There is a phrase that they call saying, those that can't work, teach. Some people who can't work do teach and they shit at both. Some people that do both are shit at both or aren't shit at both, but I prefer to work as well. And uh, the only reason I left the other trainer as that is because there was an incident with a boss uh, that, that went out that I didn't want to be associated with. And as I've said before, the second incident that got me out of teaching last time where I went like a bit low level undercover was, uh, one of the students on a course who was being disruptive, I, I like fucking basically almost had a set two in the class because I told him to fuck off, then went out at lunchtime and with somebody. Yeah, they literally went out at lunchtime and someone. And I was like, well, while well, all this court case is going off, do I want to be in a known location every day? You know what I mean? And I didn't. So, yeah, that's why I left last time.